So it's time for the second half of my October wrap up. Now we've reached the end of the month and I've managed to read six more books. And I've got uh, out of the six, four, five of them are net galley arcs. And one is one I got from the library and it's from it's on the shortlist for the Goldsmiths Prize. So that's the one I'll start with first. And it's Pieces by Helen Oyami. And it's shortlisted for the Goldsmiths Prize, which is being announced next month. And sadly, I've not been able to read all on the shortlist because my library are still struggling to get a hold of three of them for me. This one is, it's surreal, it's magical. The Goldsmiths Prize is for books that push the boundaries of, of writing. And you've got Otto and Xavier on a train with their pet mongoose. A train that has no, no destination, even the ticket doesn't tell you where it's going, tell them where it's going. There's one person on the train that they know of and it's the person who sort of owns the train uh, and she's been on this train for years so is she a prisoner or is she a passenger and as they carry on with the journey they find other people on the train and it's surreal and magical in the fact that every carriage is unique and different you've got a clock carriage you've got a library carriage you've got things like that and all the people they meet they all have a connection and the connection they have is with a person who might or might not exist. He's someone that is glimpsed and is he there, isn't he, or isn't he? And everybody seems to have got a connection with this person who might or might not be there. So it's a really surreal read. When you get to the end of it, you're not quite sure what's happened. But that doesn't matter because that, it is just the experience of being on this train journey. The second one, um, I was wrong, it's not Annette Galliarch. This one is the winner of this year's YA Book Prize. And it's Hanny and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. And, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> and this is the fake dating trope. So we all know what happens. And fake dating tropes <coughs> and you've got two um, girls issue and um, Hattie and you've got racism because they are um, in an Irish school but they <coughs> they are um, the only um, brown girls in the school. Hani is really, really popular. Issue is a sort of grade A student who is a bit abrasive. Hani wants her friends to accept that she's bisexual. Issue wants to be popular so that she become head girl. So they decide to fake date to achieve each other's aims. So by fake dating, hopefully Hani her friends will accept her and issue will become popular. Um, you've got other things in there as well. You've got Islamophobia, you've got toxic friend, toxic friendship, um, you've got bullying. There's a lot more in it than the fake dating trope. So that's that one. Now I move on to the Ned Galliards. This one comes out in February and it's called The Direction of the Wind by Manny, Mansi Shah. And this is about um, finding yourself, really. You've got um, a young Gujarati woman, Sophie. She's in her late 20s and her father dies. And when she's going through his things, she finds that the mother she was told died when she was six actually had left them, had abandoned them to go to Paris to become an artist. And so you have two timelines. You have her mother's timeline when she arrived in Paris and you have Sophie's timeline for going to find her. And so you have the two women's experience in Paris in a city 
where they can't speak the language, where they come from a very privileged background where servants do everything and they're suddenly having to find their own way and do things themselves. So you've got the two the two timelines. Um, I preferred Sophie's story to Nita's. I found her, her arc a much more interesting one. The next one was a translated um, work and it comes out in January and it's translated from the Swedish and it's called Stolen by Anne Helen Lestadius. And this is by about a, a Sami girl. It's a coming of age story. And you've got the reindeer herders and she's born into one of these reindeer herding families. And when she's nine, this girl, Elsa, she sees her reindeer calf being murdered, being butchered. And the man who's doing it threatens that if she says anything, he'll kill her. So this fear is with her as she's growing up. And we move to when she's um, a woman in her 20s. This man is still around. This fear is still there. And it's a coming her coming of age story, as well as talking about the life of these Sami reindeer herders. Really good book. I really enjoyed that one. The next one was um, a cracking book, this one. Wayward by Amelia Hart. It's her debut novel, comes out in February, and it's sort of gothic y, it's witchy, but do not think pointed hats and broomsticks. We're talking natural magic, the magic of nature. You've got three timelines 1619, 1942, 2019. Three different women, all connected, and they're all connected by. Um, by magic, by family, by a cottage, wayward cottage. And it's their timelines, a slow discovery of their gifts. And I'm not telling you any more because, you know, it's a, a story that if you let one secret out, you blow the whole thing for the person reading it. But an absolutely super story. And what I liked is that all three timelines are almost equal. You are invested in every single woman. I love that one. And the final one is one that I've just finished. And again, it's, it's a gothic one. It's The Whispering Muse by Laura Purcell. Um, I'd read The Familiars by her about three years ago and I loved that one. This one is set in the theatre and it's um, about Jenny, who's our narrator. Um, she is employed by Mrs. Dyer, who owns the theatre, to be the dresser of their leading lady, their star, Lilith, um, on the proviso that she spies on Lilith for her. Um, you've got in this, you've got betrayal, you've got gruesome deaths you've got a curse because um Lilith is given a watch that she believes talks to her anybody that owns this watch becomes a star at a price so you've got that um sort of undercurrent of mystery death gore in this book really good um so those are my six for the second half i read five in the first half of the month the disappointing thing with october is that there wasn't a single five star i, I didn't have a single five star this month which is well oh, this is the first month that i've not had a five star um the best book for me is wayward um, it wasn't a five star, just close to a five star. But that is my book of the month. The one with the three timelines and the natural magic. And I absolutely loved that one. I loved all three women. So that's my book of the month for October. Hopefully, November, um, I'll see a few more five stars. I hope so. 
So, happy reading. Take care. Bye.